amazing people who will be in front of the room today. They're going to throw so much information at you about things that you know nothing about. Fair warning. However, the things that you will know when you leave here will make it priceless to your business. So open your mind, take really good notes, and most importantly, write down their number and their email address because you'll want to follow up about all the things that you can capture. So without further ado, some of the most amazing women that I know in my world, um, it's more the two people that I know, <laughs> two people that are more than just the people that are right here. Miss um, Marianne Sigurdsson, who is president and CEO of Get Found by Design, and Miss Wendy Klim. They have put their businesses together and are here to do some amazing things for your business. So Wendy and Marianne, take it away. Thank you for having yeah, us. Well, I'm Wendy, and a lot of you don't know me. Um, a lot of you are more familiar with Mary Ann, so I get to leave today. <laughs> well, that would be my son's category, not mine. I don't cook anymore. Thank goodness. I gave that up years ago. Actually, when my son went to chef school, I gave it up. <laughs> Well, I would like to start off by thanking you for coming today. I do know that taking an afternoon out of your busy lives and your business is not always easy. So please, you know, give yourself a hand for your commitment to success and growing your business. And then to take a half a day off to learn about things like SEO. Yes, ma'am. Oh, SEO is enough to, you know, get it. Even beer. What does that mean? Search engine optimization, local rep uh, marketing, reputation, branding, all of this stuff is so critical to your business, but so often it's what gets overlooked for the just sheer volume of what it takes to get done what you do every day and what you're good at. Um, how many, we're going to start off with branding because when you open a business, it should be where you start. Because from this point forward, that's where you want to go. So who knows what branding means? Making your name known out there? Giving yourself a presence so that when people think, I need this, they know who they're Exactly, exactly. Branding is about establishing yourself in the marketplace. Your brand should be what tells the customer what and who you are. Okay? Um, can I tell you a little bit about myself before we get to your eyes? Sure. Okay. Um, I have been an entrepreneur for about 20 years. I um, had a, another business that I sold in 2012 that I essentially started with a handful of cleaning bottles underneath my kitchen cabinet and grew it to a business that had over 20 employees and about 150 to 200 um, clients. So it's a pretty sizable company. And I'm not going to lie, at the time in, in 2012 when I sold it, I, I did spend about a month doing the happy dance <laughs> um, to move forward. I have two amazing children. Um, I would love to stand here and tell you they're just two and four, because then that would make me feel really young. Yeah, but that would be a lie. <laughs> they're 20 and 24. Um, when I sold my company, one thing that I really want you to understand with that is that I essentially sold air. The company had about $500 worth of actual physical product and equipment. Okay, The rest was my brand and my client base. So branding is very, very important. Okay, so. I had someone after I sold it had made that comment about how wow you just sold air and I, I thought I thought they had been drinking, but they weren't. And then I started thinking about it and it was true. And that's what a brand does for you. Let's see now. I'm gonna do a PowerPoint, which I hate doing PowerPoint, by the way. And uh some brand managers um, define your brand as whatever your prospect thinks of you. 
It's also known as your reputation. Your brand confirms your credibility. Okay. It also delivers your message clearly. When you set up your brand, make sure that when someone looks at it, they do know what you do as much as possible. Um, sometimes you're not going to know. I, I think when Yahoo came up with their brand, I'm thinking nobody knew what they did. Okay. Mm -hmm. But having it, it deliver a clear message is also very helpful. You also want to connect with your client base, with your target. So if your target is children, having some very elaborate design, probably not so much of a good brand. Having primary colors, probably a good thing to have in your brand. So you do want to keep your, your target market um, as, as well uh, in mind. It also is what motivates your buyers. When you hear um, uh, the brand Coca-Cola, what, what does that make you think of? Soda. Not tea. Soda. Pardon me? Bad tea. Yeah, well, there's that too. <laughs> I, I'm not thinking that was their intention of the brand, but it, 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 it was. What else? They're commercials. Refreshing. Makes you thirsty, right? You're thinking, wow, they should have drinks in here. Sugar. Sugar. <laughs> Who said sugar? Yes, definitely. It also um, creates user loyalty, and that's something else. And by the way, I'm going to start here. If there are any misspelled words, and you will find them on my slides, I can promise you somewhere. Um, math was my subject in school. <laughs> but creating user loyalty, one of probably the biggest um, examples of this is Coke and Pepsi. Now, you will have people argue that Coke is better than Pepsi, and you have people who are going to argue that Pepsi is better than Coke. No, Coke is it. <laughs> okay, great, um, great example of creating a loyalty, okay? And they create that with their brand and with all of their messages. I'd love to give you the old question with the taste test. Now, who can um, who can tell me what the most, if anybody knows, the most famous brand out of the market today? McDonald's. Nike. McDonald's. Nike. Keep going. Google. 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 Geico. Geico. General Motors. General Motors. These are all great. Believe it or not, the number one is Apple. And what is so amazing about this, and, and the reason I bring up, I'm going to actually show you the top six, because I want you to understand what it is the big boys are doing with their branding. Because just because you're a smaller company, you should be emulating as much as possible, following their steps. You know, They have billions of dollars. They're paying a lot of people to come up with these strategies. There is nothing wrong with mirroring them. Now, Apple is just the brand. Just the brand is valued at $104 billion, the little apple. Wow. Brand revenue. This is money that just that apple brings in is $156.5 billion. Just the brand. That's not the products. I know, it's crazy. They spend $1.1 billion on advertising just their brand, not their products. Now, if you start looking at the ROI, would you think $1.1 billion is a good return on investment? Mm -hmm. If it's valued at $104? Yeah, that, 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 that's a pretty good return on your investment. Microsoft is number two. You'll see Microsoft, they are valued at $56 billion. Their brand revenue is $77. Their advertising on that is $2.6 billion. That is the power of the brand. Because when you see the word Microsoft, you know what that, that is, right? Who, who here doesn't know what Microsoft is? Who here wishes they you say you didn't? You've not heard? Come on, Bob. Number three 
would be Coca-Cola. And you'll see they spend $3,342 million, which is basically $3 billion, on just marketing their brand, just that Coca-Cola. Number four is IBM. And just for those of you who uh, throw McDonald's out, McDonald's is number five. Okay? I know. And believe it or not, they don't spend a billion. Their theirs drops down into millions of dollars spending on advertising their brand. They they're go with a smaller budget. So when you are trying to define your brand, there's some questions that you want to ask yourself when you are, are, are considering that. So first of all, you need to, to figure out what you do and what product or service do you offer. And I know that that should be a no-brainer, right? How many of you do more than one thing in your company? Most of you, actually. Um, how many of you sell services and product? We, we've got about half the room again. So knowing what you sell and what, what your products are is very important with determining your brand. Who is your ideal customer? Who here would like to tell me who their ideal customer is? I have a home improvement company, so my ideal customer is a homeowner who has a home that is usually the older homes and in need of energy saving. Excellent. Great. Anybody that you know, doesn't have a vehicle? So they don't have a vehicle. No. Great. Who else would like to share what their ideal customer is? A parent who is struggling with a son or daughter. With math, algebra, or calculus. Okay. So your brand, you don't really need to market your brand to say 20 to 25 year olds. Calculus. Calculus for your college? Okay. For okay. College. That's where knowing exactly who your customer is, all of them. You have mentioned anyone without a car. What about somebody who's got a broken down car? Okay. Okay, so, so you making a list of all of your possible ideal customers. Start at the top. Start at the best one that you want. You know, if it's uh, someone with a specific budget. Um, you know, Monica back here said, you know, children struggling in math. You know, parent, children failing math. That's your ideal customer. That's where you want to start. Okay, and then the ones you know who have C's and, and on down the road. Next, you want to determine what three words, this is a tough one, do you want people to say about your brand or your company? Trustworthy? Yes. Honest? Cost of money. Very good. Anybody else? Some things you'd want somebody to say about your brand? Effective. Effective? Value. Value. That's an excellent one. Dependable. Dependable. Gets <laughs> results. Gets results. These are all very, very important things. Choosing your top three. What it is you want people to say about your brand. Here at Get Found, one of the things that we want people to say might be deliver. Always deliver. Increase revenue. We, we increase your revenue. We, we increase your, your uh, client base. That might be some, something we want someone to say. So determining what those three words is, is a very good start. Next, what three images do you want to pop up into their head? If I say the word McDonald's, what, word, what image pops up into your head? The arches. Cheeseburgers. Cheeseburgers, yeah. Who remembers um, Ronald McDonald? Yeah. Who remembers the the, the cheese burglar, the, the kind of that costume? Oh, and, burger king. Oh, I just dated myself. I didn't I just, oh, I don't remember. I heard a rumor they had that. <laughs> that oh, sh don't mention the purple guy. Purple guy, creepy. But the images that pop into your head are very important. If you hear the song, um. 
We've got the whole world in their hands. Can you tell me what brand is that? Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, yeah, a few years back. We're dating ourselves. A few years back, right. <laughs> Just a couple. So the images, so you need to think about what images do you want them to see when they hear your brand. Okay? That's very important. It's going to help you as you begin to develop. So when you have your brand and you've developed, you, you, you look for your, what do you want them to say? What do you want them to see? What do you want them to feel about your brand? Then you move forward from there. We have a class, um, it's a, a, two, a three to four hour class that takes you even further in depth with the branding. Because there are a lot of things to take into consideration. Colors, your colors. Catherine back here would not use the same colors as Eric, yes. Eric would. Because her demographics, her, her client base is different. Catherine is looking for someone who is, is um, wanting some, some more um, personal development issues, whereas Eric is wanting something to deal with your home, a hard asset, if you will. So we, we take you further into that, and that's something that um, we will be offering down the road. So you'll be able to look forward to that. We actually have a list of classes we'll give you later on to show what what we have because we're, we're not going to just leave the hanging. I've kind of got you started thinking about this. Has this made any, anybody had an aha? Did this help you with any ideas? Nothing? I just entertained you for a minute. I like the idea when you said uh, what do people think of when they hear what you do. And I've never really actually thought about that. I'd be curious to know what people do think when they hear that. Avalon hypnosis. What, what's the first thing that visual that they get in their head? Well, exactly, because if the, if the visual is in their head, <laughs> <laughs> <not gallery. laughs> uh, if the visual that they're getting is not the message that you have, then you need to look at some, some different things. Um, maybe it's your name, maybe it's your colors, maybe it's your tagline, you know, how you present yourself. And I'm going to just throw in a little caveat on that because how you present yourself is very important as well. And I understand that it's, it, you know, it's not what's on the outside that counts, it's what's on the inside and that is the way it should be. So now we're going to step back into the real world for just a second and it does matter. Okay, unfortunately it does. If you're going in and talking to corporate America and bankers and you walk in in a polo shirt, you, you may not be sending the right message if you're if you are a um, an investment advisor. If you are walking in and in a suit, okay, women you're all dressed up, maybe you know, she got the heels on and all of that, and you walk in and you're a cleaning company and you're gonna give them a quote at somebody's house, do you think that's gonna send the right message? First thing they're gonna think is, oh my gosh, I can't afford you. Mm -hmm. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> there's no way. I mean, she's going to come in here and heels and knows and I, there's no way I can afford you. So the image you present is important. Always make sure that the image is matching your brand and your customer base. There are a lot of instances where polo shirts and jeans are a very, very appropriate um, image that you're wanting to get. So that's all. I'm not going to harp on that, but I wanted to throw that out there. Any questions? How do we find out more about the branding class? I have a flyer that we're going to give you that's got a whole list of them. Um, we have actually taken all of the various aspects with your digital marketing and marketing your business as a whole and created a series of classes. We will also be bringing in other professionals to help you with other aspects of your business. For example, um, payroll, or merchant services, or accounting, or QuickBooks, those other areas, unfortunately, you, you know, you got to know. In, in order to be successful in business, you, you have to know. So we'll be giving that out at the end of the class. So thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. Anyone else? Yes? Um, in taking one of your classes, what's a practical thought that you would walk away with when you're taking one of these classes? What would a person hope to achieve? 
At the end of a class, what we want you to take back are action steps to make a difference. So that what you're learning about, if you're walking away with branding, okay, you come to the branding class, what I want you to walk away with is a solid brand. Okay? Maybe not the entire thing developed because you're getting some graphic art and those kind of things, but you're going to walk away knowing the message you want to send, the colors you need to use. You're going to know that how to take it across your entire marketing platform, from your digital media to your print media to your signs on your vehicles. Whether you want to sign on your vehicle, that's another question. You know, do you want to put a sign on your vehicle or do you not? Some industries you, you can't or you shouldn't. And some is an absolute must. If Eric doesn't have a sign on his vehicle, that's crazy because you're in front of your people because if you're sitting in someone's driveway giving them a quote, you seriously want their neighbors to see your sign. That's, that's, that's a form of branding. So we give all of that and we go through all of that and take you through the whole process. There's a little bit more to the process than what I can do in 15 minutes. So. Anyone else? Thank you, Kevin. How much is cost? Cost. The class is vary anywhere from fifty to one hundred dollars for either the half day or the full day classes. So they're they're all varied um, rates on those. With the chamber members, we do have some discounts and things like that because we always want to take care of our chamber members. So that'll be published. We actually on our website there's an events area and you can click on that, you sign in and we'll actually send you updates when we have the can the them on your calendar and let you know what's coming up and you know so you can just register right there. Anyone else? All right, we'll go on to the next one. I, I've got you for another 15 minutes and then I'm gonna turn you over to Mary Ann. We're gonna talk about domain names. We've talked about your branding, you come up with your, your image, now let's talk about your the core of that, the name online. A domain name is your web address, okay, it's your digital real estate. Now in the housing market, do I have any real estate agents in here? What's, besides price, what's one of the most important things about your real estate? Location? Geographic, you know, uh, the type of clientele that you're gearing yourself towards. Comes back to location. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Areas of expertise. Area, yeah, exactly. And uh, it comes back to you need to be in the right place. You need to be able to be found. I'm going to give you um, an example of this. My company was a cleaning company. It was called Red's Cleaning. Now, how many people do you think went into Google, said, I'm going to find me a cleaning service in Orlando, and I'm going to start looking at Red's Cleaning? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no. <coughs> no, because that made no sense at all. And unless I have billions to spend on my brand, I probably needed to make sure that that was easily found. So where your business is located on the digital highway is very important. Domain name is just your unique um, name, uh, web address. So you have your www.blank.com, .net, .org. Now they have 700 new extensions. You can pretty much go just about anywhere with that. How to choose the right domain name. Somebody, um, anybody have any ideas what is important when you choose your domain name? What what? Factored into your decision? The length. Of the length. Very good. Yes. Mm. Longer ones are harder to remember. And for them to remember. What else? Anyone else? The name of your company. Name of your company. Excellent. If you have, for example, Red's Cleaning, would it have been better to have Orlando Cleaning Service or oh, Red's Cleaning? <laughs> But I need to brand myself as Red's Cleaning, right? So you have have both. Okay? One helps you on your searches a little bit better, and one gives you the identity. So you, you don't have to just have one. Oh, you have more than one domain name? Sure. No. How do you connect them? It's magic. That's when Marianne just goes in and does all this magic stuff. <laughs> no, it's really, it's not that difficult. I, I actually did it. 
And by the way, in case you're wondering, I'm not the technical expert of the pair. <laughs> you probably recognize that with my really technical terms that I use, right? Gives it away. Um, it's, a, it's a very simple thing. You go into Google, you're just basically flipping the switch and, and pointing it to the right, right direction. You can do as many as you want, okay? It can get costly. It, it does need to be part of your marketing strategy. You would not want to do that without having thought it through, but yes, it can be done in very little simply. Um, things to remember when you're choosing your domain name. Top keywords. Who in here knows the top key, five key words for your business that you use for your business on your website? We've got a couple of people. Excellent, excellent. Very good. Believe it or not, that is not something that people generally start with. They start with trying to brand it, okay? Determining what your keywords are and, and starting from there actually gives you a little bit more of a solid foundation as you're building to get found on Google. Because you know, there they have all this technical stuff, which Marianne's going to explain to you. <coughs> um, I just call it the <coughs> thing the jigs that you know they do all that crazy stuff. <laughs> you need to make it easy to type. Okay? If it's a word that has several spellings, you may want to rethink that, okay? Um, because if someone misspells the word, then you're sending them to somebody else, right? How many of you type something in and you're like, well, how, how did I get here? What? Oh, I, I, I typed it, misspelled it. So make it easy to type, easy to remember, short, shorter the better, okay? Um, a couple things that I have find, don't put hyphens in, don't put pu any forms of punctuation. People don't remember it. You know, putting a dash or a, a underscore, they just don't. If, it's, if you've got your website along your car and you've got a dash in there, people might not necessarily remember that, then they're not going to find you. So stay away from dashes. Dot com is king. If at all possible, you need dot com. You, you know, dot net, it's queen. Anything other than that, it's going to be a little more difficult to be found. Now, your, your organizations, your dot org, that has a very specific place as well. Um, how many of you have seen the new extensions that have just come out or have even heard of it? They came out with like 700 of them. You get dot pizza and dot realtor and and oh my stars, just craziness. Now out of the 700, you'll probably get about 50 of them that will actually stick. So please, I I I would caution you before you just get real excited and start buying things up. Avoid copyright infringement. You always want to check that because the last thing you want is for somebody, you know, to come in and sue you for it. Because <laughs> they usually got lots of money and don't mind doing it. Okay? And they can actually shut you down and not pay you anything. Okay? It can actually be taken away from you and then they just go out to go down to your whatever and buy it for 12 bucks. Okay? So you do need to avoid that um, as well. Uh, numbers. Don't put numbers in, in as well. I would avoid numbers and hyphens. Keep it simple. It also needs to reflect what you do as much as possible. Okay? Choose.com. Now for just a couple of fun little facts. Domain, buying and selling domains is becoming more and more prevalent. And I mentioned that they can come in and and um, take your domain from you if you've got some copyright infringement stuff. Has anybody ever had somebody call you or email you and say, hey, I'd like to buy your domain? Has anybody sold their domain? We had someone over here too? Tina, you did? I never sold it. But they do because location, location, location. And if you're trying to brand yourself, 
with a specific name, it may be worth it to you to spend five hundred, a thousand, ten thousand dollars even to have that brandable name. Some of the top ones that have sold, vacationrentals.com sold for thirty-five million dollars. I know, who would have thought? But yes, $35 million just for the web address, they, they, just for the domain address. They did not buy a website, they did not buy a company, they did not buy a product, only the digital real estate, only the, the um, domain. Insure.com sold for $16 million. Oh, 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 there you go. I know, $14 million, sex.com. <laughs> It does. It really does. It really does. Have that in your domain. You do come up for you. Fund.com. Uh -huh. You can tell us what that is. Porn.com sold for $9.5 million. This is an interesting one. FB.com was purchased by Facebook for $8.5 million. Do you think it was worth it to them? Absolutely. Business.com, Diamond.com sold for 7.5, and Beer.com sold for 7 million. Casino.com sold for 5.5 million. So these are some of your big, big domains, and this is the the reason I brought this out is I wanted you to understand that a domain name is your location on the digital highway. The more upfront you are, location, 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 the easier seen you are, the easier to find that you are, that's what you need. And that should be going into the process of determining what domain name, name or names that you would like. One other thing I wanted to throw out, because I, I like to throw out a little bit of a something relative, but a not quite off. Who owns their name, domain address? Do you own the misspellings of your name? Good question. I don't have no idea. I don't think so. Okay. Now, my name is spelled Wendy, W-E-N-D-I-E, -E, which means I need to have Wendy with an I, Wendy with an I-E, Wendy with a Y, Wendy with an E. Then we throw my last name, which is Clem. K-L-E-M. Now, how many of you used to get mail that you actually looked at? We don't get mail, we look at it anymore. That had your name misspelled and you knew it was a marker. As soon as you saw the misspelled, you knew it was a marker, right? Same thing. Every one of those misspellings you need to have. So I've got to have K-L-E-M. I have to have C-L-E-M. K-L-E-M-M. -M, K -L -E -M -N. All of those versions. And you ask why. Why would you need to do that, right? Who wants to know why you wouldn't want to bother? Why? I own a company. I own two companies. I'm partners with Mary Ann. Well, I'm standing up here presenting myself as an expert in marketing. And you're like, oh, yeah, I went to that class for Wendy, and I'm going to go see. I can't remember the name of you know, her company. I'm going to put it with And a porn site comes up. Woman, half dress, photos. No, why not? But I think you stop a moment, wouldn't it? If you are an investment advisor, what if they put something inappropriate? You know? Because your name has value as well. And a lot of times, how many of you go out networking? People get to know you, Bob. They, they, they know you. They, they know your name. They're like, man, I don't remember how to get the help Bob. They go in and type your name into Google, and boom. There's only one Bob. Well, yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Might be a problem, right? So owning your own name and the misspellings of your name, and any of you, anyone in here written a book? I I was going to say, I know we've got a couple of authors in here. There's another. You need to have your author and your name. Okay? Um, these things help you get found. But more than that, you control them now. 
That is your control real estate. So I won't harp on that, even though it's a little soapbox of mine. But I'm going to throw that out there. You, I, I recommend that you look at that. At least get your name spelled correctly .com. Okay? I would get .com and .net, but at least on the .com. So that nobody's putting something out for your Drexel that you just really don't want people seeing. You know, and, and if you're going to brand yourself as, as, if your name is part of your company, then that's something that's very important as well. Okay? Any questions on domains? In the back. Um, you had mentioned uh, copyright infringement. And if you're doing your search for your domain, obviously you're talking about going beyond that. If no one else has that domain name. Correct. Then how do you determine whether there's any copyright infringement? There's actually a, a website that you can go to that shows what's trademarked. And you type in the name and it'll show if it's been trademarked or not. Okay. So when you get all these Google web crawlers and all this stuff crawling around out there, so they're looking for domain names as well as tags and content and all that? The domain name helps, okay? That is not what Google is going to be searching for, okay. okay? But how many of you, when you're looking for something, you go into Google and you just type the word, no spaces, and throw in .com. OrlandoPlanningService.com, boom. Because I get aggravated trying to search through pages and pages of stuff. More and more people are becoming savvy with the internet, and that's what they're doing. So in that case, I want to come on, okay? Because more and more people are doing that. As far as your SEO and all, it, it does not have enough of an impact that I would I would say was a must. Okay, it helps. That, that's it. That's all I can really say. Anyone else? So what if they trademark the name after you've had it? That's when you call an attorney. Because then you've got a legal battle. You can determine whether or not you want to fight it. And it can get expensive depending on what it is. Does get found by design help you trademark? <laughs> yes, we can help you. Actually, that that's interesting because I did have a, a friend that warned me about being trademarked because their company was almost taken on. The hypnosis was almost taken. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And uh, they warned excessively about trademarking. Mm -hmm. um, one of the uh, domains, there was a company in, one in, I think it was Japan. Um, it was definitely in Asia. Um, and they had a single storefront <coughs> business called iCloud. Yeah. Uh, not a huge business. They did quite well. And then Apple came out with I everything and decided, oh my gosh, we need to own all the I's. I everything. So this little tiny company sold iCloud for over $10 million. <laughs> and they just went and bought me cloud. <laughs> they didn't care. I mean, that's a nice little boom to your, your uh, bottom line. But it is important to understand that domains do have value. And they will increase in value, and that will become something more and more prevalent as you see more and more of your brick and mortars stores you know, going away. The, the domains are going to be even more and more important. Yes, Kevin? Uh, actually, because of Mary Ann and Donna Loader, I uh, bought CatherineNapier.com and I bought HypnosisTrainingClass.com and for me that's a homer. Yes, absolutely, absolutely, especially because you're an artist as well. You would absolutely have to have, and I would even have with artists, Catherine Napier artist as well because um, it brands you. It's, it's just another form of branding. Esther, you said that there was a website that showed what was trademarked. Do you have I do. I just didn't bring it with me. Um, I'll, I'll get it for you though, um, and I'll, I'll let everyone know. It's it's another thing. If you have one thing that I didn't tab on my slides, if you want to know who owns a website or a domain, you see one and it's something you're interested in, 
and you might be interested in purchasing it. It's called whois.com, W-H-O-I-S dot com. You type in the domain name and it tells you who owns it. Okay? And as you go down and look through it, you can usually tell if it's going to cost you a great deal of money because if it's a broker that owns it, yeah, you're going to end up having to spend a little bit more, just like buying from a real estate agent, a real estate broker. If it's an individual, you can look and see how long they've owned it, if it's got a website on it, and, and, and it might be worth you know, contacting them if it's something that's very important to your brand. But who is .com? Yes. What if your name's so long? But they get tired of typing before they got to the end. Where it's no. to go. I would still own it because there will be people who you just don't want. You just don't want somebody else to have it. I, I wouldn't necessarily if it's really long like that. Worry about all the misspellings, but I would definitely own it. it it's ten or twelve bucks, you know, a year. It, it, it's not like it's a lot of money, and it could prevent you from problems down the future. Identity theft is becoming such a huge problem. You know, that's another another way to help start protecting yourself for what might come down the road. I don't think like the bad guys, so I can't quite think how they might do crazy things, but it's my understanding that it's going to become an issue down the road. I have a question. Now, with the domain names, is it easier to own your company name or your personal name? They, they're going to, if it's never been created, if you're going to some place like GoDaddy, they all pretty much run the same. You're, you're looking at $10, $12 um, either way. Because they don't differentiate by number of characters. You know, you can spend the same, you can spend $12 for a three character domain name and a 30 character. They don't charge it by the letter or whether it's a company or a personal. They don't make that, that judgment. You know, who, what would they put you on? Yeah. Craziness? You know? Google. You know? Some of these names you, you So then they would then there's a way that you can link that to your actual page. You can link your name to your actual page. Yeah. You don't have to build a site on it. Just because you own the domain does not mean you have to put a website on it. Really? Yeah. And it doesn't mean you have to put a website on it so that they can find it. You can direct it to a site that you already have. Now, I'll, I'll give you an example. I, um, I have written a book. It's going to be coming out in a few months, and I have purchased my name, my misspelling name. I pushed purchase author Wendy Clem. All of those, I'm not going to build anything on all of those. Those are all going to be directed to one site. I'll probably end up, I think, with all of them, about a dozen of them, all forwarding to, to the one site for the book. And, and that way, I, it just cost me the cost of the, the domain name itself. And then you have to register it again. How many of you have not registered your domains? When you get that little email that says your registration's up, you need to re-register, and then they send it to you again and again and again. And oh, again yeah, yeah. register. Yeah. In fact, I just checked that. But they, they send it to you sometimes. A hundred times, months. it seems yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The reason for that is they don't want you to forget. Because guess what? If you don't register your domain name, somebody else will buy it. Okay? Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, I appreciate it. I will be happy to answer questions. I'm going to turn this over to Mary Ann now. And she's going to start with WordPress. Because see, that makes sense, right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, uh, I'm trying to get us through because we have a lot to cover today, So, um, and we're throwing a lot at you. Uh, one of the things I really want to point out to you is that it's very fascinating to me to think about the three images, three words, and um, what people think about you. And some of you might have been sitting there saying, when I do that, what next? Okay, well, guess what that is? That's keywords and content that goes into your website and carries through your brand. And that's really how all that stuff starts to starts to flow. So um, that was phenomenal. Um, I just sorry guys. Here we go. Wendy Helper. 
Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, so uh, today we were talking. <laughs> the, the goal today was to talk about the 10 things that you need to be successful in digital marketing. Wendy started off with branding and domains, and she did an awesome job, so uh, thank you very much. Um, it's very exciting for me to have a new uh, partner, and we've had a, a really great time together. I'm going to go on to, that was um, number two, we're going to go on to talk a little bit about WordPress. So who knows anything about WordPress? Who knows what WordPress is? <laughs> I got some big hands in the room. Um, we are WordPress experts. Uh, the only thing I do is WordPress, and uh, we're going to find out. WordPress actually started off as a blog, um, but the best way for me to explain to you about what is WordPress is by this quick um, little video here. Now I'm going to warn you, you may hear some terms that uh, is not, that is unfamiliar to you. Uh, don't worry, we're going to talk about these things. Okay? Chances are, if you're watching this video, you've already heard about WordPress. But what exactly is WordPress? Simply put, WordPress is web software you can use to create your own website or blog. Since it was first released in 2003, WordPress has become one of the most popular web publishing platforms. And today it powers more than 70 million websites. But what many people don't really is your own full featured website using just your web browser. Best of all, it's completely free. That's because WordPress is an open source widgets and themes that enable you to build a completely custom website for just about anything you can imagine. So how does it work? Well, since the early days of the internet, websites have been created in HTML, a programming language that utilizes complex instructions called tags to format text, page layouts, images, and so on. Your web browser then reads this HTML code, interpreting those tags to render and display the content of a particular page. These days, you can install the WordPress software script on your own web server in about five minutes. And once installed, it enables you to use a simple web-based editor to create web pages without having to learn HTML. There's even a hosted version at WordPress.com that allows you to create a new WordPress-powered website in just a few seconds. And because it's built on industry-standard PHP and MySQL, WordPress can run on just about any modern web server. There are several reasons WordPress is a great choice for building your blog or business website. First of all, it's open source, which also means that it's free. And with hundreds of people all over the world working on it, WordPress is constantly evolving and improving. Second, it's user friendly. Rather than having to hire a web designer or contact a webmaster every time you want to make a small change to your website, you can easily manage and update your own content, all without having to learn HTML. In fact, if you know how to use the basic formatting tools in a program like Microsoft Word, you can edit your site. Third, it's flexible and extensible. There are literally thousands of plugins and themes, both commercial and free, that enable you to easily change the entire look of your website, or even add new features like polls or contact forms with just a few clicks. Next, if you run into problems or if you want to add some highly customized features, it's easy to find support or hire someone to help you. In addition to the tutorials on this site, there are also thousands of WordPress developers and designers who can help you. The official WordPress forum is a great place to get answers to your questions, and there are other sites like the WordPress Stack Exchange or WPQuestions.com where you can also find answers to all your WordPress questions. Right out of the box, WordPress is standards compliant and includes everything you need to ensure that your content is optimized for search engines, which is critical to your site's visibility and online success. In short, WordPress is made to do SEO well. And last, you'll be in control of your own content. Some other publishing platforms limit what you can and can't do on your own website and you're locked into that service, if it should ever shut down, your content could simply disappear. With WordPress, you can import your data from other systems like Blogger or Tumblr, 
And you can also easily export your data to move away from WordPress should you choose. You're in control of your site and your content. So if you're looking for an easy tool that will help you to build your own blog or website without having to learn complicated HTML, no other system makes it this easy. And you'll find that WordPress is incredibly flexible with thousands of themes, plugins, and support options to ensure that your site will continue to grow with you in the future. We trust this video has been helpful, and we look forward to seeing what you're able to build with WordPress. So that, <laughs> yay, <laughs> that is really a little bit about, um, about um, WordPress. And uh, I want to talk about some of the key points, because in that video, that actually came right from WordPress.com. That's uh, the organization, so to speak, the, where all the collaborative people help to develop the software. But there's some terminology in there that may or not, may or may not, may or may not have made sense to you. And I also want to point out some very important things. 70 million websites, they said, that WordPress is currently um, powering. That represents about 25% market share and growing. All of the websites built. 25% and growing on WordPress. That is mind-boggling. Um, the second thing is they talked about open source software. Open source means it's not owned by anybody. A whole bunch of people collaborate to develop this software. And it is, yes, free to install on your server. The challenge is that the knowledge and some of the expertise on how to use it isn't necessarily free. But it is free to use. And open source is truly a trend that's going on in software. What's trending is two things, open source and something called SaaS, software as a service. Um, that's actually what Microsoft Office is trying to go to with their Office 365. The, second thing, the third thing is they talked about themes, plugins, and widgets. So that's how many, how, how many people know what any of those terms mean? Very cool, very cool, very awesome. So let me give you a little bit of a foundation for those that don't. Uh, WordPress is the core software, okay? So on top of that, you layer something called a theme. Theme gives you look and feel. It gives you the colors. It gives you the kind of um, sidebars they have. It gives you the page which It gives you the font styles, the basic overall look and feel of your website. Plugins give you functionality. Functionality like a special com calendar of events that allows you to take reservations and pay with PayPal. Uh, a functionality like a uh, directory of members. Uh, functionality like uh, e-commerce. Uh, just about anything. And I can tell you literally there are tens of thousands of themes and there are tens and thousands of plugins. Okay. And the widgets are really just the little sidebars. We kind of, when we build websites, we build these little frames in our mind, okay? And so we have little boxes, and in these little boxes we can add little little uh, pieces of functionality from the different plugins. So those are just the widgets that are on the side. At the end of the day, with the kind of support that WordPress has on the market, with the longevity that it has in the market, and with, every, with the demand and everything it has in the market, I can tell you 99 and 9 tenths percent of the time there's a plugin for that. And that is the thing that makes me so excited about WordPress. Two things. It is easy. I've spent my life working with small business people. And I've spent my life, some of the people in this room, very room, can attest that I have rescued, I can't tell you how many businesses from webmasters. I'm ashamed to say. This goes back in the day when you, know, you had to know that geeky code. Right? And so you call this geeky person that you can hardly have a conversation with because, you know, they were just one of those in the closet type. And they, you can tell them something simple and maybe one of these days it'd come out and, and you'd get your website fixed. And you had to know that crazy geeky stuff. You don't have to do that anymore. How many people have gone to see the Get Found by Design website? Great. Go, go look. I want to tell you something. I did not write one piece of code to build that website. I personally built that website myself, and I did not write one piece of code. Is it a .com? 
Yes, getfoundbydesign.com. And speaking of branding and domain names, when we came up with our company name, we sat at GoDaddy, and we knew we wanted Get Found. And we did every, every, every iteration of Get Found, <laughs> and getfoundbydesign.com came available. And we couldn't believe it. That's how we had our company name. And it started with, with, the, with the domain name. So uh, themes, plugins, and widgets are all you know layers that you add to WordPress. Um, flexible, I talked about. There's a plugin for that. I got to tell you, I have had the most bizarre requests and things, and there just isn't anything under the sun. I've got um, a pilot training company. They they are, they're com they train commercial pilots, just like real estate. You have to have your CE credits. Well, commercial pilots have to do the same thing. And this is a pilot simulation training school. And they, they do that, and they also lease pilots and stuff. And they needed to do an online application. I've got a point and click online application builder, literally point and click, okay, that we can go in there. Our calendar of events that we now have on our website is, is a plugin. Point and click. It's just crazy. It's, it's, a, it's pretty exciting stuff. So you no longer have to be held hostage by your webmaster. And by the way, your domain, your website, uh, your database, all of those things are your digital assets. And as business owners, you need to be extremely concerned about protecting your digital assets. They are every bit as valuable as your physical assets, if not more. So that is really, really important. And the other thing is, I don't know if any of you guys know this. There was a, in the in the video there was a number six that said SEO was made to do well. That was a quote coming from Matt Matt Cutts. Matt Cutts is the head of spam and search engine optimization and all the algorithms that these crazy search engines do for helping you get found at Google. He is the man at Google when it comes to search engine optimization, and he's saying WordPress is built for SEO. So that's a really, really important thing. If anybody wants to know who Matt Cuts is, mattcuts.com forward slash blog, speaking of your name. Um, and then last but certainly not least, there is a hosted version. In the video they talked about, there is a hosted version. So the, 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 there is a version that you can get your own web server. You might have heard the term web server on that video. Okay, right? Some of us like to make these terms really scary and sound, you know, a web server essentially is nothing more than a hard drive connected to the internet. As in it's in English simplest terms. That's all it is. Okay? It's where your website lives. Okay? So you can have the version of WordPress that we work on is the version that you put on your own web server. And what we strongly encourage is that you build that hub and you own, you start, your hub starts with the dirt you own. That means that you build your corporate website, your main website, on your own web server. That's the part that, you know, not the hosted version, okay, but preferably on your own web server. And then you kind of create a spider web around you. All those other domains can point to you. All those other things can, can point to you, but your hub is on the dirt that you own. The hosted version of WordPress is, if, if that's where you start, that's where you start, it's okay. Um, um, there's certainly nothing, it's better you have that than not, let me put it that way. But um, uh, you have less functionality, less widgets, less, less plugins, less all those things. But it's certainly a, a great place to start. At the very least, I do recommend that you pay the uh, one upgrade, which is $99 a year, and then you can have your own domain name. And I really strongly, because otherwise you're going to have, um, uh, my iStore at WordPress.com. You know, you, you, my, I mean, my, I, my iStore dot WordPress.com. So you want to have your own domain name, not a subdomain of, of that. Okay? So everybody understand about WordPress? I do have a question. Um, there's WordPress.org and there's WordPress.com. Yes, sir. Are they separate entities? or I can't remember now at this point because I've had my website for five years. Is there a difference between the two? And yes, this is the hosted there? version versus the non-hosted version. Okay. okay. I believe that you have the non-hosted version. Which is the one. Yes. Okay. okay. And um, uh, so one means that you're sitting on WordPress.com server. 
Okay. You're sitting essentially behind their firewall. Right. Okay, right. so that's why typically your website would be something like erichus. Uh, wordpress. Com okay. or whatever. Now you can pay an upgrade fee, and you can get rid of that. What's called a subdomain. Okay, so erichus. and you can make it say just erichus. Com. Right, that's that ninety nine dollars. Okay. But you're. you're but I'm good because I'm working and I don't have that because I'm not. Good. Right, you're 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 you you're. you're, you're, you're you're not a self-hosted. You're hosted with WordPress. I think I could be wrong. No, I because I go through HostGator. Oh, then I'm wrong. Then I'm wrong. Okay, so you're 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 gold. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you buy your um, domain name at um, GoDaddy and then use the same thing on for the ninety-nine dollars, or do you go to the ninety-nine dollars and pay for it and? Uh, that's a good question, and I didn't yeah. look. Um, I, I don't do the the the, the self-hosted uh, that that version. So I, I just went and checked before I came to class to make sure that I, I knew what I was talking about. It was ninety nine dollars. I don't know if they if you have to have your own domain or what, but if you if you do, it's ten to twelve dollars a year. It's not an expensive. Thing. Speaking of domains, guys, your primary domain that your website is built on. Little golden rule. Okay, always make sure that that domain is renewed out at least always two years, five years better. Okay. Now we're going to tell you a lot of things that you need to do. Okay. She's going to tell you that the website is better, your domain is better if it's not a real long name. Uh, somebody, I'm going to tell you, um, you know, whatever things that you'll hear today. Understand that the, that the, the game, the getting found online, the key to getting found online has to do with a lot of different things. So think of if I had a whole bunch of buckets lined up across these tables, okay? I want to try to get all my balls in the buckets. I'm not going to get them all in there. So you do what you can. So I'll give you a really good example of that. One of the things that if you just bought a brand new domain name, one of the things that's important in search engine optimization is what's called an aged domain. That means a domain you had for a long time. Well, if you just started your business, guess what? You don't have that domain for a long time. You can't get the ball in that bucket, right? But what can you do to compensate? Well, what you can do is extend the, the, uh, the, the renewal out of that domain for five years or ten years. Because the search engines, the spiders, the crawlers, and somebody they call they're called spiders, um, they see when that domain is set to expire. And the message that you're telling the search engines are, if I don't, if I don't have my domain name purchased for less than a year, or you know it's getting ready to expire, or it's 18 months or whatever, essentially you're telling them you don't intend to be in business that long. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the that's about just now. How about when it asks you uh, when you're buying a domain uh, if you want to make it uh, make my domain private? All that means is when she told you about whois.com, it would come up and it would not show your name. Okay, now be prepared. I don't do it. Okay. Not in the game, by it. Be, well, it depends on who you are. Okay. Um, there may be some reasons why you may want not want, not want to have who owns that domain public. It is a personal choice, okay? I don't do it because I'm cheap. <laughs> okay, just put it out there, okay? I, 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 there's, I, I just don't spend money on things I don't think. And, but that's my personal choice. Now, here's the other side of that coin. When you buy a domain, okay, at like that, your information goes out in the public record, and guess what you're going to get? You're going to get phone calls from every SEO Tom Pick and Harry on the planet, okay, and every other thing trying to sell you their services. I personally have fun with those guys, okay? <laughs> so just be prepared that that's what's going to happen, okay? So um, that's pretty much how, how that works. Yes, sir? When you build in WordPress, you have to host in WordPress, or can you build in WordPress and then host anywhere you want to? Um, the two aren't connected. Okay, WordPress is the plat is the is the software that runs it. Okay, right. and what what you do is you install WordPress on your right. hosting platform. Okay, you can host anywhere you want. So I okay? can build the site on my computer and then I can no, host no, no, it no. somewhere else. No, 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 no. Well, it, 
if you're very technical, you can download WordPress and you can build it on your computer and then you can upload it. But that's generally not the way it's done. You have to be an extremely technical person to be able to do that. Generally what you do is you select your hosting provider, you pay for your hosting service, you then install WordPress on there. So you have to do that for every domain that you build? Oh, no, 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 no. How many files do you have on the hard drive on your computer? How many files? Yeah, you have a lot. You have more than one. Let me put it that way. Okay, right? So remember I said that your web server is nothing more than a hard drive connected to the internet? Right. You can put as many websites, well, generally speaking, you can put as many websites on that server as you have space on that server. Or as you have, if you want to get really geeky, what's called SQL databases. But generally, you're gonna, you could do a half a dozen probably pretty easy, and if you ran out of space on that one server, that you could increase the plan and get more space. Typically, now, different host providers are, are different. Blue host, I think, only lets you have one. GoDaddy, you know, the other ones you can have as many as you have. HostGator is my, uh, our uh, preference, because they are built for internet marketers. They're, they, they just get it and whatever. But as long as your host provider is, you need to make sure it says that they will host uh, WordPress because you have to have PHP and a few. But it's pretty much a standard. Mm -hmm. You know, there's very few that don't. So, uh, no problem. It is. It's my, the website I have, huh? and I think is, is in uh, Joomla. Uh huh. Uh huh. <coughs> I'm told it's, if I get the directions, I can get into it, but I'm afraid to go in there. I mean, would it be smarter to move over to my Twitter? Well, uh, Joomla is another form of a content management system. These new, you know, open source kind of content management. Typically, there's Joomla, Drupal, WordPress, and one or two others, okay? Um, in my humble opinion, okay, first of all, you probably can't break it that much, okay? So I really wouldn't, don't be afraid, okay? But I will tell you this, okay? <laughs> Um, if I were you, especially why what you just said, I would move over to WordPress so fast to make your head spin. The reason why is because Joomla is a much more complicated content management system. Okay, it is now they've gotten better over the years. Okay, uh, they're they're a little bit more user friendly. I will I must say that. Okay. But um, and, and they're they're runner up right there to, to WordPress. Uh, I, I gotta say a lot of you know they're open source or all those things. But they just don't have the demand that WordPress is, and they are far more difficult to work with from a user perspective. Okay, uh, so well, I would I would uh, uh, absolutely take. And the other thing is, if you haven't gone in there and looked at a long time, it probably needs to be updated. So it's probably the time to do that anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yes, I'm sorry. Um, so I have. I have a GoDaddy in my website. Huh? I just go to my website and I install WordPress. Uh -huh. And then everything will start happening. <laughs> oh, no. Yes, what can we start happening then? Let me tell you, you ready? Okay, the work starts. That's when it starts. Now we're about to magic the wand. Um, they use your magic wand. Exactly. You know, here, here, we're going to have lots of classes on WordPress, okay? And we will have some WordPress. I can direct you lots of WordPress how to things on, on your site. I can tell you, it's, if you can write an email, if you can use Word, you can learn to use WordPress, okay? And and what what we what we do we get clients options. We're gonna have, that's the reason we have these this classroom, okay? We'll have full on WordPress classes where we can teach you how to install, how to work with graphics, pages, posts, keywords, all the crazy stuff in English in a way that you can in a in a very you know structured way, you know. Or the other option, what we do for a lot of people. Is I tell I tell them let me do the heavy lifting. Let us do the heavy lifting. We'll get the site up and running and all the core and everything done for you, and then we'll teach you. We include in the package. We teach you how to use it from there. Yes, sir. So if I understand you right, uh, we're gonna go to GoDaddy and establish our uh, our domain name, and then download WordPress to our domain name. I was I'm confused because I thought you could download it to your computer. No. Okay, thanks. But the way to do it is to go to... You, well, you, no, no. you have to buy a domain. 
Yeah. You can wherever you buy a domain is up to you. Okay. In our case, we buy all our domains from GoDaddy. Okay. We do all our hosting at HostGator. Okay. All right. You don't have to host at the same place. I don't like GoDaddy hosting, personally. Okay. Why? Why? <laughs> I prefer a C panel. They have a lot. The GoDaddy is. Who's ever bought a domain from GoDaddy? Okay. Yay. Let me just ask you this question. How many add-on questions did they ask you before yep. you got to the end of the checkout? Yep. About 10 just now. Thank you. Okay. So they are very good at adding it on, packing it on, packing it on, packing it on, packing it on. Okay. Now, how many emails do you get from GoDaddy? <coughs> Need I say more? I just, you know, it's just not my thing. And I don't like their C panel. Well, it is the cPanel is the dashboard that runs the computer, the your server, which is the, the hard drive that's connected to the internet. Okay, GoDaddy essentially has a, a firewall. Okay, and it's really dumbed down, and it really doesn't give you the flexibility that you like. Okay, with HostGator, I go directly to the the the, the dashboard. I don't have I don't go through their firewall. So. And, and I think that most gators faster, and I think it's all those things. So, so to answer my question, I think I just heard that you go to get your domain, uh -huh. then you go to HostGator to get hosted, yeah. and then you download WordPress to. Let me make it even simpler right? for you. Yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me let me make it even simpler for you. Please. Get them by design.com. Give us a call 407 <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, let me know. You can buy your domain from GoDaddy. You can go get your hosting, go to the by Design, and there's a little ad you can click on the host gator. You only need the baby package, piece of cake, okay? And um, and then there is a one-click install on the cPanel for WordPress, okay? All right. I want to play with it, and I want to be, that's what I want to do. Control, control panel. Control panel, yes. That's that. Remember when you were in here and I was showing you guys the control panel? So there is a one-click install. For WordPress on the C panel, on the control panel, the dashboard for your HostGator server. So when you buy your domain and you move it to GoGator or Gator or whatever, when you do that, uh, they'll walk you right through how to take it away from GoDaddy to them. Um, it's buried in this stuff. I mean, it, it's or not it's that hard. to have take, a great yeah, web yeah. designer. Yeah, that's that. So that's why we have classes. That's why we have, you know, um, the, the done for you service where we can do the hard stuff and then let you focus your brain on what is important, which is your message and your content. So you, 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 either way, okay? It's, it's re these are one-time things that you have to do that don't get your brain worried about, you know, don't let that stumble you. They're, they really are very. It sounds difficult when I'm explaining it to you, but literally, if you were sitting in front of your computer. I can walk you through the process in less than five minutes like that. It's very simple. Very and so what you're saying is that you're going to have a class for WordPress mm -hmm. for them. Yes, yes. Beginning, intermediate, and advanced. <laughs> what is Wix? What is Wix? Thank you. Joke? J O K E? No. <laughs> I didn't say that. I did. In That's the industry, awesome. in the industry, there are any number of website builders. Post, uh, GoDaddy has one. Wix is a good example. Point and click, you know what happens. Okay, that is in in back in the day. This is how people built websites. They're static HTML sites. Okay, I have a client right now that is a local restaurant has a beautiful website on Wix. Guess how many index pages they have? Anybody want to guess? Zero. What is an index page? An index page is a page that Google knows that exists because here's what happens when people go to the proverbial white box and they fill in what the terms, the words they're looking for. Google, here's what happens in English, okay? User sits there, restaurant in Sanford, okay? Google says, oh, this person's typing, looking for a restaurant in Sanford. Let me go into my memory bank that I got from those spiders that I was out crawling all over the internet that I put into my memory bank.
let me go into my memory bank of indexed pages, what I remember is there, and let me deliver to this person who's looking for restaurants in Sanford a list of what I think is the best, the best restaurants, so we're going to deliver to them good search, search engine results page. That's what just happened. If you don't have any pages that are indexed by Google, and the person puts in restaurants in Sanford, and Google goes into its memory banks from the spider's crawls that it did, and put in its memory, what are the odds of you being found? Zero. Mm -hmm. How many index pages are in the WordPress? As many as you put. So in your case, what's really cool, okay, here's what's real kind of Catherine, same thing, okay. Um, we did uh, your restaurant, your re recipes are all blog posts, okay. Every individual post and every individual page is an individual indexable page by, by Google. Yeah, so Catherine, when you look at Catherine's website, she has been posting um, uh, blog posts like a maniac. She has so many index pages, it's crazy. Okay. I didn't know I was that smart. <laughs> she taught me. The blog in the, um, in the website, if it's on WordPress, then it could be indexed. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Yes, essentially, yes. The other ones can be, but they Wix, Wix tend, and some of these, I don't want to pick on Wix because that's not a fair thing, okay? But what tends to happen is they're behind a firewall, okay? Uh, either one of two things. They're either one behind a firewall because, because the, the web builder, the way it's designed, builds a frame around the website, and it's a, what we call a firewall, okay? So that's one one challenge. Okay, they don't all happen that way. And this one particular restaurant I'm talking about is is what this is their situation. Okay, and I so that's one thing. The other thing is that it is what's called a static page. It's the old style website. Okay, so what by by in other words, it's built with HTML. So what that means is you're telling the search engines, because search engines know that static websites don't get updated very often. So essentially what you're telling the, 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 the search engine is, don't come back and see what's on my page very often, because it's an old site that's going to be there forever, and there's never going to be anything new. So don't bother. That's the message you're giving the search engines. Today, we build websites both for our visitors and for the search engines. And we have to remember that. If, uh, if somebody has Wix, if somebody has Wix, can, can they go and you're, you're in GoDaddy, you can also have Wix, right? <coughs> the domain is in GoDaddy. Huh? You build it in Wix. Uh -huh. You can get out of Wix and just put it in GoDaddy as a domain, but put it in WordPress. You have to transfer it to WordPress. It's it is WordPress. a manual transfer. Okay. There's no, there's no, um, there's no uh, um, conversion. conversion. It's a manual process. It's a manual process. But if you do like I do, okay, I have a laptop which has an extra monitor, right? So what I do is I have my laptop and I have my monitor next to it and I have Wix up here and I have WordPress up here and I go copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. So, okay, so we've got to move on. Um, we're going to talk about keywords and phrases. Um, what are keywords and keyword phrases? Um, keywords are simply those terms that, um, uh, that people put to enter into what I call the proverbial white box, which is AKA the proverbial white box. We were just talking about that. Okay. Um, uh, so a keyword, a key keyword typically is a single word like dentist. On the other hand, a keyword phrase is a string of words like dentist in Sanford. And what's called a long tail keyword is a longer string of words, three or more words. So it would be best pediatric dentist in Sanford, Florida. Okay? Now, the reason that we do that is because um, dentist 
The word dentist by itself might be very hard to rank for. The competition is really tough. There may be a lot of, certainly a lot of search volume, but if you put in dentist and you're looking for a pediatric dentist, you may end up driving traffic to you that you don't want because you're a pediatric dentist. You don't want an oral, somebody who needs oral surgery, right? Okay? So you want to tighten in and, and, and get your keywords a little bit stronger and then you, the, the more targeted, and the more targeted you are with your keywords, the less competition typically you have. Okay, the less traffic you have, typically, but that doesn't matter because it's targeted traffic. It's kind of like akin back in the day, we used to do um, newspaper advertising, okay? And the newspaper went to every household out there. Well, if I do home remodeling and home repairs, and do I care if that newspaper went to the apartment block down the street? Of course. It might not be a good target audience for you. Right. Okay? So this is the same thing when you target your keywords a little bit better, you have less traffic, but it's qualified traffic. Okay? So um, that's what keywords and keyword phrases are. And, the and, and when it comes to keywords, you want keywords that have a degree of what we call commerciality to them. So, for example, plumber, or no, no, sorry, back up, plumbing, okay? If I sat and put in the word plumbing, okay, and I found, uh, and, and I get the search engine results back to that. Okay, the search engine doesn't, and, and, and me, if I'm a local plumber and I'm trying to get that, that uh, the, the optimized for that particular keyword, I may, might be, might be somebody that's just simply look, looking to figure out how to fix their own plumbing. Do, as a plumber, do I want to drive traffic to my site for people who are looking to fix their own plumbing? Probably not. Okay. On the other hand, if I was optimizing my site for the word plumber, guess what? I know that that person is looking for a plumber to fix their problem. The word plumber has a much higher degree of commerciality than the word plumbing. Okay. So how do I find keywords? Well, uh, one of the things that we live in in this world is constant change. Would you all agree with that? <laughs> in life, we have constant change. Okay, in the internet space, we have change at the speed of thought. Okay, so um, having said that, there was just a huge algorithm change, and we used to do things like we had keyword tools and stuff like that. And Google is now um, taking that away from us. But never fail. It'll all work itself out. Okay. So the best thing I'm going to give you, because the other thing is we're going to tell you a little bit about, we're telling you about what we do here. But we want to make sure that we, you guys walk away with things that you can do on your own as well. We want to give you solutions to what can I do in my little world. Okay. So how do I find keywords? We'll start by the proverbial white box and typing in a word. Okay. Now, when you type in that word, when you start typing, you'll notice the little drop down in the proverbial white box. Words comes up. Does anybody know what that is? Nobody used keywords. Very good. Very good. Excellent. That that's gold. That's what that is. That is Google telling you, I have search volume for similar words like this. So this is what people are searching on those words. So those are great, you know, possible uh, uh, keywords to take a look at. Okay. Also, the other thing is when you pull up a Google page, if you go all the way down to the bottom of the page, you know the place that very few of us ever really go. Okay, <laughs> that place, right? At the very bottom, you'll see something that says search related terms. Search is related, and it'll give you a whole list of words and phrases. Okay, that's related to whatever it is that you're typing. That's a clue also. Do we got our inspector's hat on now? Okay. All right. The other thing is, look at your competitor sites. Anybody want to know what their competitors are doing and searching your keywords for? I don't know how to do that? No. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I love honesty. No. I don't want it. I want to know. Go to the website. Right. Go to your competitor's website. 
Right click. A little window is going to pop up. Right click. Uh huh. And you're going to be able to say view source. View source. View source. Okay. Guess what you see when you do view source? All the HTML code pops up. Do we type view source or is there you, you, You're going to type. You're going to type. It's a little pop-up window that's going to come up, and there's going to be several options, and one is going to say view source. It's actually view page source. There you go. Thank you, Joseph. I'm sorry. Joseph, our production manager, corrected me. Good job. Okay. It's actually view page source. Okay. And you will be able to see now. You're gonna see, okay. Take a deep breath. Okay. You're gonna see geeky stuff. It doesn't matter. Okay. You're gonna see geeky HTML stuff. But be still, my beating heart. Okay. Scan it. Just scan it. And look for a word that says title tag or keywords. You can also press Control F and type in keyword. And if it does have keywords, it'll highlight. There you go. And you can also kind of hit Control F and type in keyword, Joseph. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. I think we keep him around. Exactly. Can I keep him around? Keep him. No. He's already. He's already taken. So, so that's how you can see what your competitors are kind of optimizing for. Okay. Yes. What you mean? You do F, control F, and view source. Yep. When you hit view page source, uh -huh. and then a little a pop up window is going to show up, it's going to be this geeky little post. And, and when you're in here, just hit control F. Okay? Okay? And keep, just, control F is for fine. And then you type in the word keywords, and if there's keyword, the word keyword is anywhere on that page, it'll, it'll take you to that point. Okay? So that's there's there's some ways. Now, there's another way. You can do that. It's called www.getfoundbysign.com free keyword research market analysis. That is a permalink, okay? And it's a longer um and and I'm gonna I'm gonna um it's got a button to push. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take a really quick second because I we're gonna run over time, I can already tell. Um, so I'm a little worried about it, but uh, but but this is this is important. So I'm gonna show you guys this really quick. Okay. So this is this is our website. Okay. First of all, I, I made it small so you can see, okay. This entire website, all of it, was built, okay, with absolutely no, I didn't, I wrote no code, okay? Oops. That's the first thing, okay? The second thing is, all right, if you go um, here on the page, right click, view page source, there's that geeky stuff, okay? Okay. And the third thing is, okay, if you go right down here, free valuable free stuff. Okay, free keyword research and market analysis. Okay, click click on that link. Okay, and this little form comes up. Tell us a little bit about yourself. It's a $297 value. We offer that free uh, to our um, prospective clients. We'll do the keyword research for you. We'll do a competitive analysis for you. We'll do a greater greater report on your particular website, and we will send you your own private portal uh, for you to play with it and view it all and be interactive with the data. So once you go to your keyword, what are you going to do? You're going to put it here. Okay, so. Okay. So I showed you the back end of, of Get Found by Design, okay? You see this headline right here? When it comes to getting found online, dot, 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 this is a headline. So you and I, as human beings, see this as a headline. Because I told Google or, or, or WordPress, WordPress sees this as an H1 tag, a header 1 tag. You have H1 through H6, okay? 
I'm optimizing for getting found and iterations of getting found and getting inter on our on our primary website, getting found online. Okay. Do you know that right now, if you put on put in get, in fact, we have a brand new client in uh, Fresno, California. It's an e-commerce store that sells the most awesome women's socks. It's called Hottie Hosiery, and they are hot. Okay, <laughs> they are really cool. Knee highs, over thigh highs, and just way cool stuff, right? Um, you know how she, how, why we had that client? That's right. She went to Google and she put "get found," get found online. I guess who came up? Okay, number two. Above GoDaddy. Okay, but we have a keyword rich domain. We we've, we've done a lot of things in that area. Which we, we have an age domain. We have a keyword rich domain. We have a header tag that talks about get found. If you go back and you read this content right here, okay. Uh, uh, let's face it, we're not in Kansas anymore. Blah blah blah. And this will talk about getting found in Google and search engines, okay, and all of that. So we've done all the things that we, we've optimized the page for that, okay? So that's why. So do you see how you started with branding? What are the three keywords? What are those images? How do those, you know, now we're starting to pull it across to our website. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good, good. All righty, so let me go back. Um, Pam, um, oh, I got the wrong one. Here we go. Okay, so um, so that is um, that is about keywords. Okay, <laughs> so not to worry, Google's going to be. Um, there's some new things coming out as far as keyword research. So tying right into those keywords is that taking those keywords and turning it into content. Okay, so that's content marketing. Okay, so what the heck? What the heck is content marketing? Oh my God, you're throwing another term at me. It's you know, it's really, it's not that hard. Really, content marketing is just a technique that we use in creating and distributing content that's relevant to that particular keyword, and we use that content to attract, acquire, and engage our target audience with the goal of getting new customers. So did we do that with the keyword get found online? Uh -huh. So did you see how we started with what is it that the client really wants? What is it we want? What is it we want them to think about us? They help me get found. Right? So then we took that thought and we created a keyword rich domain, get found by design, and then we took that and, and we, we we knew what image we wanted. Bullseye, target, okay? Right? And at the time it was Dory and I, now there's a third one. But we kind of like the logo, so we're not going to change it. <laughs> we'll pretend there's a third one. We've been there. That's all right. The little thing in the middle the bullseye. There you go. And, 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 we, and we then brought that content into our website, okay? So really, content marketing is all about the art of communicating with your customers and prospects. Wait for it. Without selling. Okay. Without selling. Without selling. You heard no. No. Let me explain. Okay. It's called one word. Anybody know what the word is? Information. Close. Education. Close. You guys are getting there. Get trust. They know, like, and trust you. Exactly. <laughs> Unless I know, like, and trust you, I'm not buying. You're not getting my money. <laughs> so it's about creating the conversation, the dialogue, the relationship, the interaction, the social, all of that. That's the world we live in. So we're here up front, okay? We've opened our training center. 
We've, we're pouring our hearts out to you. We're giving you lots of information, good, valuable stuff that you can take away tonight and use. And what are you going to take away from that? Trust. Do you trust us? Trust. That I'm not allowed to sell. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, I'm not there for providing yeah, yeah. a good quality service. You're joking. I'm right. going with you. Basically, what the feedback I hear from a lot of clients when they uh, new to hypnosis, looking for a hypnotist, is they're saying the site, my site's clean, uh -huh. and I, they like the fact that I'm not trying to show them my sales right. stuff down their throat. And of course, if you talk me into doing that free consultation mm -hmm. stuff, that's really getting a lot yeah. of feedback. And I rarely have to do the free consultation, uh -huh. which I, I feel fine doing, but it's what. But that's it. part of building that relationship and that trust. Okay, and there's lots of things. That's what social media, that's what the social world is that we live in today. You will get so much more. And the other thing is about education. You can use education to sell your product or service like there's no tomorrow. Okay, mm -hmm. and what you're going to do is build trust, build that reputation. Okay, and you are going to position yourself in the market as the thought leader. Eric. Man. Do you know when we moved to Florida 14 years ago, we bought this house sight unseen? <laughs> kind of a funny story, and we link, we fit together all these years later. Anyway, I digress. Um, would it be valuable to you if you were perceived in the market as the thought leader when it comes to home renovation. Oh, absolutely. Is there anybody in this room that could say that that would not be beneficial to them? I rest my case. So that's what content marketing will do for you. And that's why it's about not selling to, to start with. It's about developing the relationship. Okay. The other thing I will tell you about content is con the purpose of content is to attract both our search engines and our visitors. So if we're talking about getting found online and our headline has talking about getting found online and our body copy is talking about getting found online and we have a relevant link anchor text to another page in our site that's talking about getting found online, and we have getting found online in the last paragraph, here's what happens. Here's the English translation. Here's what CEO, SEO does for you, okay? The search engine comes, and the search engine sees getfoundbydesign.com. Ooh, they tell something about get found. They then follow the website, and they look at the first page one tag. Now remember that a search engine, the difference between a search engine and a human being is that a search engine does not have the power of reason. Okay? So the search engine comes to the website and it sees the headline that says, when it comes to getting found online, and we're not in Canvas anymore. Oh, I guess this page must be talking about getting found online. And then it starts reading the paragraph text, and it's saying, and it's browning points. Oh, yeah, that's what I thought it was when I came and it said that. Yeah, it's really about that. And I start reading, and yeah, it's even more about that. So I'm building these browning points, and now, it's ranking me up higher in the pages because the search engine is able to verify, boom, yes it is, yes it is, yes it is, talk about this topic, yes it is, yes it is, yes it is. I like this page, I validated that it's really about this topic. I want to deliver this page as a search engine result to any visitor that puts in that term because I verify that that page is really about that subject matter. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Okay, so. <coughs> I walked out of the room, I'm not a search engine anymore. Enter Marianne the human. Okay? Human says, I need to get found online. I've been the proverbial white box. Get found online. Number two listing. Hey, there's a company there. Get found by design. Maybe they know something about that. They come to my website. Talks all about getting found online. And subconsciously, Catherine, you can talk about the subconscious mind. Subconsciously, it's, the visitor is saying, I'm looking for information about this particular topic. Oh, it's here. And it's here. And yes, and it's drawing me in because you're giving me information about what it is I'm looking for. So you see that really the search engines and the human being essentially does the same thing. Mm. 
So the search engine is really the word of mouth between sites. Uh, social media is more social like the word of mouth between friends. Search engines is the computer that indexes the brain, the index on the, the pages. Yeah, that's keeping track of the dialogue. Let's I'll say. Make, I'll make a comment to that. You, make, you mentioned conversation engagement. I still am very much a rookie on learning the engagement online, but LinkedIn and places like that so they are actually reaching out and doing things because they're seeing certain things that I've done, which is they're commenting on it, which is good. You want to have the conversation. Those words or sharing or whatever, they want you to, they notice it. Those big companies are bigger than all of us. Yep. So uh, anyway, uh, bottom line content is king. So we'll go on. And we've gone through a lot of questions, so we're going to go through that. Anatomy of a search. I'm going to try to fly through this, guys, because we're, we're way here. Uh, are we ready for a break? OK. Yeah. Want to take a break now? Yeah. Yeah. So this is a good place. Let's take a, a quick five minute break. Uh, we'll see if you can do There is some cookies and treats out in the lobby area. Please help yourself. There's I saw the picture of the